What about if you're an old manager and you really don't want to deal with all of technology that now exists, with all of the analytics that now exist? Your name is Tony La Russa. Tony La Russa is a manager of the Chicago White Sox, who I told you last year had lost the clubhouse. Remember the spat he got into, how he wasn't defending his players. And I thought Tony La Russa would be gone, but for his relationship with Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner of the White Sox. And that is the clear reason why La Russa is still there. Yesterday, the White Sox were playing the Dodgers and the damnedest thing happened. Trey Turner is their number three hole hitter. Likely the best, well, their top three is Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Trey Turner. Hard to find a better top third of your lineup in all of Major League Baseball. Apologies to the Yankees. You know, Coca, can I mention the fact that Coke got rocked last night, or is that just too soon? Too early and too soon. I'm going to say it's too early, too soon. Not going to do it. So Trey Turner's up to bat. He's facing a lefty. The Dodgers have a small lead, like... 7-5 7-5 or whatever the case may be. Trey Turner has a man on second and Freddie Freeman. A man on first and Freddie Freeman, excuse me. Strike one, ball one, ball two, ball one, ball two, ball in the dirt, strike one. Ball in the dirt means that Trey Turner is at the plate. Freddie Freeman has advanced to second base. First base is open, and Tony La Russa puts four fingers up. He intentionally walks Trey Turner with a one and two count. Two strikes. Where Major League Baseball hitters hit 100 points below their average, though Trey Turner is a good two-strike hitter, and he has done well with two strikes this season. That said, the general principle is when you can get to two strikes, you keep going. But nope. Tony La La Russa walks Trey Turner. Trey Turner doesn't know what's going on. He goes to first base. In comes Mac Muncy. The things about the intentional walk that we focus on before deciding whether or not to give a player an intentional walk is what do we think the impact is on the guy on deck? How able is the guy on deck to channel his embarrassment into a successful outcome at the plate? And the answer that we always had when we did intentional walks is whoever was on deck who we're going to bring up to the plate, there's a matchup reason, there's a mathematical reason, and we believe the psychology actually does not exist. That thinking that you need an enemy, Michael Jordan style, thinking that you need a competitor to get the best out of you, thinking that the guy in front of you got walked, which is a total slap in your face because they want to face you and not the guy they walked. None of that works. Max Muncy comes to the plate and he hits a three run home run. Tony La Russa was slinking in his chair, hat off, giving the post game press conference. One of the questions asked was very simple like, why? And he said, why are you even asking? This, it was a baseball decision. This made sound baseball sense. Trey Turner bats whatever he bats as a lefty with two strikes against a lefty. Mac Muncy, if we get two strikes on him, he's a 100 hitter, he's done. It makes perfect sense. You are criticizing the result, and I'm the one who has to do the moves. I love that answer. That's an answer that comes with experience. That's an answer that you give when you are saying to fans, do me a favor, and STFU because I know what I'm doing and you don't. And I'd like you to sit in this chair and make these decisions as they're happening instead of analyzing them after they're happening. And that's the whole key, right? One of the big problems we have right now with coaching is that we evaluate coaches on result and we should evaluate them on process only. So the process of Tony Larusa walking this batter, walking Trey Turner, and not getting permission from the front office prior to the game for that exact scenario is a fireable offense. When we had a rogue GM or a rogue manager, we took care of that immediately by cutting the head off the snake. Whether it was firing a GM or firing a certain scout, firing someone in the baseball department who just had a bigger voice in the company than they should have had and was a misleading voice nonetheless. That's exactly what Tony La Russa has now. Tony La Russa is covered by Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner. Terry La Russa, excuse me, 
1-800-919-4469. Tony La Russa believes that anything he does because of his World Series ring, because of his gravitas, he can say this was the right baseball move. And that's what he said. He said, for all of you questioning, you're totally wrong. This was the right baseball move. All of the moves done by managers like that are approved before the game starts. Tony La Russa should not have the ability to make that sort of decision during the course of a game. And the reason why I don't want my manager making those types of decisions is that the juice as I like to say, is not worth the squeeze. Him being wrong and giving up the Muncie three-run homer is way worse than him being right and Muncie rolling over and getting out of the inning. In terms of social media, public backlash, player backlash, potential lasting impact of waking a giant like the Dodgers, making them dislike you whether you play them again or not in the regular season does not matter because I understand that they were an interleague matchup. I was watching Tony LaRusso at the podium and I was thinking, I can't believe he's still a manager. I mean, I, I was there in the beginning. I wasn't even there in the beginning Then he managed and then he went into the front office of baseball as like an advisor, and now he's back in the dugout. And to me, it is such a mistake. The Chicago White Sox are one of the most disappointing teams in baseball right now. They may have taken over the mantle from the Phillies who can't lose under Rob Thompson. Let's think about that. Could he be the biggest disappointment and the Chicago White Sox? I guess you could say they have injuries, so that would excuse their poor performance, but they were supposed to run away with the American League Central. I think I said in my season preview that there's nothing to watch after July 4th. I'm glad I didn't make that a, a wait to see, that's for sure. So Tony La Russa's explanation was inexcusable. The process with the front office was unmanageable, and the result was unthinkable. Tony, your time is coming. You better be over at Reinsdorf's house right now. Literally, right now, sleeping at 7 in the morning. 